Welcome back to Change Ed. Change Ed. The number one rated, world-renowned education podcast. I want to know where you get your statistics from. For educators <laughs> by educators. I'm just going to keep going. I'm going to ignore do. that you asked that question. All together, every one of us, people listening, the people recording, the people who are editing, some of them are all the same person. <laughs> Together, we're changing the landscape of education one episode at a time. I'm your host, Andrew Kuhn, education consultant from Montgomery County Intermediate Unit. And here with me, Patrice Semitek, also out of the Montgomery County Intermediate Unit and an educational consultant. I still feel like we need better titles. Yeah, we have talked to people who are like administrators. Maybe like a change agent. I'm going to put that on my... Change agent? Yeah, that's going to be my new title. Sounds like it's undercover and secret. I did ask our director if I could change it. She said, sure, if no one looks at it, you're fine. Okay. <laughs> well, no one will actually look at it on the podcast. They'll just hear it. Yeah. I'm going to be change agent from now on. Okay. Wow. You can make um, shirts and everything. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we are on this podcast talking about our Steels Expo, which is coming up on Tuesday, April 23rd. Mm -hmm. We are very excited about our expo. A lot of excitement, a lot of energy we have. It's bigger, bolder, better than last year. Last mm -hmm. year was a huge success. We have almost three times the partners. We have increased our partnerships. We have really amazing opportunities for all of you to come and be a part of. Today, we're here with Jason Bowman from STEM Scopes. Jason, welcome. Hi. I'm glad to be here. We are thrilled to have you. Wondering if you could give us, just our listeners, give them a little, little teaser about you and who you are, a little bit of information, some background, please. Yeah, absolutely. So I've served in public education for the last 22 years. Recently uh, joined Accelerate Learning at STEM Scopes as a national academic specialist. While I was in public education, I was a high school physics teacher. I also taught integrated physics and chemistry. Been an instructional specialist, K-12 science coordinator, and I've also served in a couple of different organizations like T-Cell which is affiliate of NSTA or Texas Science Education Leadership Association, as well as a North Texas group of science coordinators and supervisors known as DFW Science Supervisors. So really tried to serve in any way that I could to help further what we're doing in science education. That's awesome. I am extremely intrigued by the idea of integrated physics and chemistry. How did that work? Yeah, so that's a course. I, I don't know if that's kind of a Texas specific course, but it's kind of a combination of physics concepts and chemistry concepts. Although it says it's integrated, uh, the standards are a little discreet mm. uh, sometimes, but it is. there's a great connection between what we do in physics and what we do in chemistry. And so trying to pull those two things together for students is one of the goals of that course. That's pretty cool. In Pennsylvania, we have usually a physics course and a chemistry course with maybe mm -hmm. a little bit of overlap if the teachers make it. We don't have an integrated, most schools anyway. I don't know what every school is doing, but the idea is interesting. Jason, so you know, one of my personal goals for this podcast is to get you to say y'all. Knowing you're from Texas, <laughs> pre-podcast yep. recording, you were saying it and I just, that's my mission. So I'm going to try to set you up for opportunities oh, where you can say y'all. Well, it's going to happen. I can guarantee it. <laughs> you, you don't even need to be set up. make it your mission to not say it. <laughs> Lunch is on me if you don't say it. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's that's probably a good plan right there. <laughs> Anything to torture Coon. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so kind, so kind. Thank you for not disagreeing with her and going along with it immediately, Jason. Absolutely. Uh, Once again, I'm the best. Now, Jason, mm -hmm. hearing your background, it sounds like your experience with science is shabby at best. Obviously, you haven't done very much. But uh, from your experience at, at Texas, what has that been like for you all? As I understand it, you, you embraced the next generation science standards earlier than we did. We're you know, here in Pennsylvania, we're embracing them now yeah. and moving towards a better understanding for ourselves. But what does that journey look like in your part of the world for y'all? Yeah, for us, for y'all. Yeah, <laughs> oh, there you go. You lost lunch. Man, Jason, so close. Two minutes um, in. You know, it's, it's interesting. From our perspective, we are actually a little late to the game for the framework for K-12 science education in Texas. Mm -hmm. Our newest standards just got fully adopted for 2020. Mm -hmm. They haven't been implemented yet. They're actually going to be implemented implemented in the 2024 school year. So coming oh, okay. out. And before that, our previous design was, I think, around 2010. And it was really a two-dimensional design. So it was, we had our, our content and we had our process skills and that was it. And so seeing how 
rich the three-dimensional design of the framework was. We really kind of dug into that as a leadership team in TCELA and really pushed for our Texas Education Agency and our curriculum standards writers that they had pulled together to really try to embrace that aspect of that three-dimensional instruction. So it's not just about what do I know and how do I show it, but how do I learn? Mm-hmm. You know, that's the that's the beauty of the three dimensions is it really takes the learning from just presenting information to really discovering knowledge. Mm-hmm. So I'm just here to present you some knowledge as a teacher, but I'm here to help you discover scientific and engineering knowledge. And uh, that piece of it for me is just amazing. I have a history in, in science. The reason I got into education was because I was a physics major in college and I actually was a teaching assistant for one of the labs that was designed for really non-science majors, mm-hmm. uh, mostly elementary education and education majors. Yeah, I would have been. And I just, they just didn't really like science, mm-hmm. uh, a lot of them. And it really kind of hurt my heart, honestly, because I loved science mm-hmm. so much. I had a great experience in high school science and I know not everybody did. And so that kind of passion really grew out of like, oh my gosh, I, I really hope people love science because there's so many things you just look around the world and you see how science and engineering affects every single part of our life. Mm-hmm. And so I actually, even though I majored in physics, I decided to like stay an extra semester and get my teaching certification so I could go into teaching. And I've I've been doing it ever since. That's been my whole career. Jason, I really appreciate what you were saying about from presenting to discovering Mm -hmm. and also sharing your own journey and how you got into education. Sounds like you were very inspired. I'm curious, was your experience more geared towards the kind of what we're saying, the the old best practices and style Mm -hmm. of kind of with the memorizing and knowing like, is that kind of your jam or did you have an experience more similar to what we're talking about here? Like kind of shifting these pedagogical practices and moving more towards multidimensional. I would say that I had both experiences and interesting, like I've always loved science, like ever since I was little. Mm -hmm. And I remember I had the opportunity to take a pre AP, like what we'd call like an honors biology class my freshman year. And I took it for six weeks and I absolutely hated it because we had to memorize everything Mm. and there wasn't like a whole lot of hands-on activities. Mm -hmm. And for me, it was just like, oh my gosh, this is just, I want to actually do some science. And so I actually ended up just switching out and going to a regular on-level biology course. And I loved it because our teacher was great. We got to do all kinds of really neat labs, which biology kind of struggles with that. But for whatever reason, this teacher was, I just remember like we were always doing something Mm -hmm. about every week we had something else to do. And I love dissections too. So that was always fun. And then I actually took uh, integrated physics and chemistry when I was in high school Mm -hmm. and we got to do projects all the time. And so we were learning through discovery and chemistry kind of the same way. There was a lot of memorization, but they still kind of sprinkled in some activities. And then when I got to physics, my high school year, I just absolutely fell in love with physics, which I know sounds really bizarre uh, because most people don't. They kind of shy away from it. I had the worst experience in physics. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And I hear that a lot, like because it can be very easy to just memorize formulas and plug in numbers and not experience this world that we have around us Mm -hmm. in like a real world connection way. Mm -hmm. Well, we got to do all kinds of neat real world connections. We had simulators that we would go to the computer. There was a computer lab. Yes, we actually had to go to the computer lab when I was in high school. Uh, And so we'd get to, you know, change the variables and like predict what was going to happen and do all these neat like hands-on labs where we were doing projectile motion and trying to hit targets. And I actually took all that stuff with me when I became a teacher because I wanted students to experience like, hey, this stuff really works. It's not just magic. Like you can actually predict what's going to happen in the future. I mean, it is kind of like magic because Mm -hmm. Everybody wants to know what's going to happen in the future. Mm -hmm. With physics, you get to do all that stuff. So, And I think there's so many connections in science where uh, it just really empowers people to see the world differently. So it sounds like your school was doing NGSS before NGSS was a thing. Like it was definitely three-dimensional in the way that it was presented to you because that's why I loved my biology class. And so we did do the dissections and stuff like that. And then my physics class, we had Bob, who was back of the book, and my teacher would always assign us the problem. And we would just yep. visit Bob. <laughs> visit and Bob. I get love our that. work Never done. Oh, great. yeah. We renamed him Bob because the teacher would walk by and we'd be like, How's Bob today? And we're like, He's doing great. Because, like, we would get, and he would assign all of the odd problems, which were the ones that were in Bob, so we could right. check our work. 
<laughs> I <laughs> failed every test, but I got all my classwork and homework in. So luckily, I passed the, the class. Yep. Yeah. So very big conundrum, I'm sure. On Bob has my so much to say today. <laughs> Bob has a lot to do, but it speaks to I think the different experiences that we're hoping teachers can start to establish in their classrooms will have more students really loving science and enjoying science. If I had a physics class where I was simulating all kinds of stuff, I totally would have been excited about it because I loved science too until I got to high school. And it was a lot of memorization and a lot of stand and deliver and a lot of in my face, like this is how you have to do it because you have to do it. Felt the same way about math too, if I'm being completely honest. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't have such a great experience in math, but my my science experiences were really pretty good. Yeah, I think it's exciting. You know, I think the important thing is that memorization does have its place in education and learning. I was hearing that when you were sharing, because you said it wasn't always this way. There were parts that I had to do. Mainly, I say that because a lot of our educators are worried that this means I'm going to have to just scrap everything I've been doing in a complete Mm -hmm. makeover. When really, it's you don't have to throw everything away. Really, you're making room for other tools, right? It actually will make your job easier and you'll see more engagement, more involvement. And it made me think of martial arts, believe it or not, that some forms of martial arts are meant to be defensive. Others are meant to be kind of that you can go on the attack. Maybe it's for fighting, but this is kind of a hybrid. It made me think, I think it's Jiu-Jitsu, where you actually use yeah. whatever energy the person's coming out with you. You like use that, not necessarily against them, but to like- To your advantage. Yeah. Or to mobilize them. Yeah. To your advantage. Yeah. It's a great way of saying it. And I feel mm-hmm. like that's actually what this teaching is, right? Like you're using that engagement and you're actually using it to further engage them. So instead of you being the one to like push the cart all the time, you kind of capture them with this interest and then they're the one doing the work. And by the time they figure out that you made them do all the work, then the class is over and they go to the next class. <laughs> and so yeah. it's really kind of a, an amazing hybrid though, is what I kind of wrote down with this as well, right? We have things that we're going to learn along the way. And then we talk about with the vocabulary. Instead of leading with that, you can actually, after we've figured it out and we used 35 words to describe what this thing is. We're like, but look, there's one word you could say. This is what that means. Oh, and then you understand what it means better. Mm -hmm. So we talk a lot about, it's not about getting rid of anything, but like I said, making room for things and then changing the order that you do it. So it's almost like taking everything we do and just flipping it, right? Like you're looking through a mirror and we kind of reverse it and spend more time on the engagement and less time on the specifics of what we're doing instead of the other way around. Well, because the engagement gives you the background knowledge to attach things to. So when you're engaged, now you have something to connect it to. Yeah. And those questions that you come up with as you're going through that discovery, that's what drives the passion from Mm -hmm. the student side too, Mm -hmm. right? If I'm just standing up talking about energy, okay, great. Some guy's standing up talking about energy. But if I'm actually doing an experiment where you're like, wait a minute, how come that thing went uphill instead of downhill? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. From my perspective, like, whoa, there's how do I explain that? There's something going on here. And getting kids to ask those questions, I think is really what drives that really rich learning experience. So what I'm expecting from you when you come up for the expo is some sort of a jujitsu. Science uh, jujitsu. Yeah. Like so I didn't take jujitsu. I actually did Tang Sudo, which was more of a defensive style. So I don't know if anyone would know the difference. I should try it. I yeah, go you've got jiu-jitsu. time. <laughs> yeah, it's YouTube all about it. the process. You it. <laughs> <laughs> True. <laughs> Yep. Yeah. Anything for a good illustration, yeah. right? There you go. <laughs> I can imagine that you're going to tell other groups to be like, do not go to the expo. They expect you to do martial arts, right? <laughs> right. No you, expectation. Uh, you're it chopping be, wood. It's it would crazy. be a bonus, yeah. not an expectation. <laughs> yep. Well, Jason, thank you so much for coming on. We're very excited to have oh you. Gosh, yeah. uh, clearly, you're a very knowledgeable and experienced person. We talk a lot about how it's not only hands-on, but minds-on. And you're obviously a combination of both. You've done both things in your career, but also are trying to instill that for learners everywhere, not just where you're at, but across the nation. So we appreciate your efforts. I'd like to give you the second to last thought as we're we're closing it down. Because he can't not have the last thought. Yeah. As a big fan of the podcast, you know. At least least he's he's acknowledging it now. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I'm not hiding punches. It only took 25 episodes to get him to acknowledge that he refuses to be the last word. This is the 26th episode, by the way. (laughs) (laughs) Mm -hmm. 
Uh, so I'd like to give that movie a final thought. It could be, uh, here's what you're looking forward to in the expo or a teaser for something that they, our participants might be able to look forward to. I guess I'll, I'll just end kind of with a piece of advice that really helped me in my career is I think every teacher should really discover their why. I'm a huge fan of Simon Sinek. Yeah. Uh, after I discovered him through a conference that I did and I read Start With Why, I mm-hmm. was like, oh my gosh, this is going to change my life. And honestly, it really did. So I discovered my why was to help people understand the world around them so they can make better decisions. And that really drives not just the decisions I made as a teacher and as a you know, campus administrator and as a district administrator, but my own personal decisions in my own life. So when I say like I get up in the morning excited to go to work and do what I do, it's because I, I get to live out that why every single day of, you know, helping people understand the world. And I think every teacher should take time to go through and figure out what their why is. Mm-hmm. Now, say, Jason, you told me you were excited to get up this morning, go to work because you're going to be on this podcast. That's a little different than what you told me <laughs> offline. Okay. So this, is, this is true. Maybe yeah, it's the, part the of his why. Really why do you have to? It's part of what I do. It's part wow. of what no, you actually have a really cool job. I appreciate you taking the time and, and being with us and all that you had to say. Make it about him again. Sorry. So. <laughs> <laughs> So not Final nice. not, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Jason. Yeah, see, obviously You're a fan welcome. of the show. Um, <laughs> Super fan. <laughs> Jason, thank you so much for taking the time to be with us, to come on the podcast and share all this information. We're excited to learn more from you and hear more about your experiences and also just what you know about mm-hmm. science and three-dimensional learning at our Steels Expo on April 23rd. On behalf of the entire Change Ed team, we'd like to thank everyone for tuning in, for listening, for being such huge fans. Now we know we're we're going to have a tremendous following in the Houston, Texas in area. Texas, yeah. Thank you, Jason. But we want to encourage all of you to discover your why. And subscribe. I think what you meant, we want y'all to discover your why. Oh, uh, and Jason ends it. <laughs> Jason, last word. <laughs> That's actually fantastic. That was really great. My new favorite human. Thank you, Jason. <laughs> You're welcome. So apparently she's not buying you lunch, but lunch is I w- included. I will buy you lunch. <laughs> oh, I will sweet. buy you lunch because I like you. Yeah. 